You know, for the first time in my life, I'm speechless. And I say a lot, people who know me, you know? I love to talk. When I was a kid, I said, I wanted to, you know, they say, oh, we're a body of Christ. I said, Lord, I want to be the mouth, you know? But I'm learning that the mouth is connected to the heart. And so I said, Lord, I want to be able to speak about, to speak about you freely because sometimes I hear when I'm with someone that you know maybe might feel uncomfortable or something. But then God helped me to understand that I just fill my heart with stuff from Him. If I just fill that heart of mine with with reading from the Bible, with prayer time, sometimes I'm just there with my guitar. And like Tito Augie will spontaneously burst into songs about beautiful verses. I think it's so cool when he does that. And you know, sometimes I jam out with Migo, and sometimes we sing to Wets with Timmy and the Perkins and Fosa and then Fosa, and then You know? And of course, the mothership. All these guys are just so awesome! And I'm just a big fan of everyone here. on one thing. The thing that really makes me speechless is the fact that I couldn't speak in 2015. I lost my voice um, from a school tour I was doing and I was talking for hours on end when I shouldn't have. You know, and um, and I would collapse and then I'd, and then they'd wait a week and then we'd do the other school tour and then I'd collapse again and I'm supposed to do 31 of them Unfortunately, I was only able to do seven because by the eighth one, I couldn't move anymore. And you know, like people know that I have a lot of energy, but what mom said, and you know, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder now when I was 17. Well, that's because when I was 14, my parents separated. And buti na lang, like a few weeks after that, Tito Ed and Bing Gachalian shared with um, me the gospel. And they shared with me about how Christ died for my past, present, and future sins. And that day while we were eating Chinese food in their house, I received the Lord as my Savior, my Savior and my Lord. He really was my Savior because I, I, was, I was in such pain, you know, my mom, dad, and I three musketeers, so much love there. But I didn't really know him as Lord. And through that time, and then they got back together after like nine months. I was like, yay! And then they broke up again when I was 17. And then I was like, oh no, not this again. You know, because when I was 14, my mom, you know, and I would just pray and pray and pray. And we thought it was all the pray and pray and pray. And it probably was, you know. But I felt like it was just like effort, 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 effort. I can't anymore. I can't pray anymore. It hurts. I mean, it's too much, too much. And then when I was 17, they broke up again. And then I was like, no, oh, that's it. And then when I kind of, I just, I just lost hope. I was like, I can't do this again. And this one day when I was working out and I didn't, eat, I didn't have too much in my stomach and then that night I had Indian food but I had uh, food poisoning. And so my body, let's just do it this way. A person is not just spiritual. They're in a physical body. They have a heart. They have emotions with, you know, hurts. And then they have a mind, their mental health, right? And I thank God that he was the one that strengthened me in my spiritual health. And all throughout, even though I'm still eating junk food and everything, he was the one that was keeping me strong. He was the one that was helping me to grow in him. But then my heart was crushed over here in my emotional health. And I want people to know out there that it's not just the spiritual health thing. That's everything. That's the thing that kept me from committing suicide. That's the thing that kept me from hopelessness three years ago when my body had again gone through a holistic breakdown. Because it wasn't just a depression or whatever. I'm a naturally happy person. Because they have God. And he, yeah, yeah. And my verse, but he, I had heard this verse so many times, but three years ago, he gave me back this verse. And this is my verse that kept me, that kept 
can't be holding on. Okay, you're gonna go back on your meds. Okay, all right. Go with the flow. Okay, I'm gonna obey my parents because I wanna please the Lord. You know, it, it's tough to obey your parents. You know, who here? Come on, come on, kids. Say amen. Come on. Who here knows it's tough? Even the adults, you know. Amen. Don't marry that person. Marry that person. Don't marry that person. Don't go out with that person. Right? Close the lights. Turn on the aircon. You know what I'm saying? It's not just the small things. It's the big things. Go off your medicine. What? I need this medicine to live. But it's not for everyone, and it was a journey. And it was a process of weaning it out and fixing my physical health so that I could wean it off. And now my medicine is no longer the psychotropic drugs. My medicine is the Word of God. And taking care of my heart. I need a friend. I need a lightning rod. I need someone that when I'm buzzed, I can, I can call. Maybe it's a therapist. Maybe it's my mom. Maybe it's my good friend Mark Villetas backstage that's helping us. Whoever it may be, you know, you need a friend. And then mental health, I have to stop watching Netflix so much. <laughs> but I'm getting there. So this is my life verse. Delight yourself in the Lord. And He will not just give you the desires of your heart, He will give you the desires. is Hebrews 12, 1, 2. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before Him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and now sits at the right hand of the Father. I like this verse, it's always been my life verse, it's because I love to run, I love to do races, and it's, this is a reminder for me to know that there are people up, upstairs, there are saints and angels that in heaven rooting for me, cheering me on, and waiting for me to finish the race. So it's an encouragement for all of us to remember that there is a race for all of us. Not his race, not his race, but your race, and we are fighting for victory. No matter what battle you might face, we are fighting for victory because the Lord has already won the battle. So I just encourage for everyone to finish the race and finish the race well. My life verse used to be Jeremiah 29, 11. But recently going through challenges with my daughter, experiencing many challenges, not only with my daughter, but many others, even with Christians and non-Christians, is First Peter 4.8. Above all else, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. In the beginning, I told you that I, I uh, my grandfather, I was a favorite of my grandfather. My grandfather was a Christian and he would read to me Bible stories and all that and I only knew one promise, and that was uh, asking in Jesus' name, whatever I needed. And I was very limited in my knowledge of the Bible. Limited in the knowledge of something so important. I didn't know that sin was exactly what brought Jesus Christ on the cross. I didn't know that one sin would separate me from a loving God. Yes, He loves us, but sin separates us from Him. I also realized that as long as I would keep myself right with the Lord, holy, I'm not always perfect, but I do everything I can to lead a pleasing life before God. It didn't take an overnight thing. It took years for me to learn painful lessons, for me to realize what love truly means. 
And only Jesus Christ was the one who taught me that. Because love must have a sense of sacrifice. And so, now I realize that love is where the power is from. That love conquers all. That love can help us overcome. We don't react with anger. We respond in love. And that is the power.